Hello, I'm Dr. Michael Kessler, and we're back again. Uh, this is part four in our episode of HeartQuest. And today we're going to go through and uh, go to the next level here of understanding. Uh, before I get started, I just want to show you how simple it is, because I don't think I went over this, but HeartQuest testing is simple and user-friendly, approximately about five minutes to run the complete test. And all you have to do is use a regular water bottle, wet the wrist, and put those little devices that you see there on the wrist, and you're ready to go. I thought I just want to uh, make that really clear. So today we're going to go a little deeper uh, into the rabbit hole. Uh, and before we do that, we just want to uh, review a little bit. And on any screen, again, we have these icons. You could click on them and these... Uh, little screens will come down to kind of give you the answers. And we're going to be looking at uh, the human frequency spectrum diagrams today, but in a little bit more depth and understanding. And this first one that we're looking at, obviously, it's, it looks like uh, the green, if you remember, is the parasympathetic, and that's high frequency range. The yellow is the low frequency range. And the red is the very low frequency range, and then it's really neural hormonal regulation. And it says here, relatively balanced state if accompanied with a normal or increased vital force. That's what we're going to be talking about today. In the case where vital force is low, it may indicate an early stage of adrenal gland insufficiency. So these two parameters, vital force, and something called the stress index we're going to be looking at. And in this one, it says here, this is your, where your sympathetic dominant, right? And it says here, increase sympathetic tone. And you're going to be producing lots of stress hormones, and including, it says, epinephrine, adrenaline, and cortisol. And you're going to have prolonged stress, and that may disrupt that cortisol to DHEA ratio. And it's also, when we talk about um, low frequency, sympathetic nervous system, that produces a catabolic state in the body. And we need to be able to go back, as we'll talk about later, between the catabolic and anabolic states to run our metabolism in our system. This pattern is seen mostly in middle-aged adults, again, because we need to have lots of sympathetic tone here to be able to get things done. And then we talked about the parasympathetic nervous system. Increased parasympathetic tone in young adults or athletes with high vital force, they have ability to do work and quickly recover. That's great if you're, you're an athlete, right? And when we talk about the high frequency, we're talking about anabolic states, building up the body. In non-athletes, adrenal insufficiency, especially with low vital force and an increased stress index, which we'll talk about. And in this particular one here, where you see all this red, this very low frequency range, we're really talking about uh, the primitive brain, the limbic system, the hypothalamus. In young adults, we see, uh, we see this a lot. If, if you see a lot of this VLF, it's usually psycho-emotional stress. In older adults with increased VLF, you'll see, you know, um, in the literature it shows it's related to catecholamines, renin-angiotensin, and, and it's related to more metabolic type issues. And we'll talk more about that as we go further into the rabbit hole. Now, it says they're fake, part of the new false sense of security system. So what are we talking about here? So when we look at most heart rate variability systems, they're looking at the low frequency and high frequency, sympathetic and parasympathetic, and they're looking at these ratios here. And if the ratios look good, they think that that person has good autonomic nervous system adaptive capability. The flaw in most heart rate variability systems is that you can have a great LF to HF ratio but if this vital force, this circle here that you see here, is low, they don't have the ability to adapt. The range is 50 to 500. This particular person has a range of about 26. It's very low. 
It doesn't matter that they have a good ratio here if you have low vital force. And we'll explain that. Because you don't have, it's like having this rubber ball. If you have good vital force, you can bounce up and down between sympathetic and parasympathetic as needed. And you have the vitality to do that versus a ball here that has no air in it. And it can't bounce anymore. It can't go up like sympathetic, parasympathetic, sympathetic, parasympathetic, like this little this um, diagram that you see underneath the hood of the heart quest showing how much um, amplitude we have going back and forth. And we'll talk a little bit about that in the next slide. So it's all about the force. May the force be with you. And here we go, a little diagram. And here's what has to happen. We have to be able to go back and forth like this. Let me click on my little thing. here. As you see here, it's going back to the mind frame. It's both things. Anabolic, HF frequency, parasympathetic nervous system, all the way over to the catabolic, uh, low frequency sympathetic nervous system. And, all, and, and that reflects, that's going to reflect in the metabolic uh, index here in the, in, in the MRI. And what we want to see here is we want a nice full um, looking pyramid. On the blue side of the pyramid in the heart quest is the high frequency parasympathetic anabolic side of the equation. And on the other side, you're going to see the catabolic sympathetic side of the equation to make up your MRI, your metabolic uh, index here. All right, kind of like the BMI. And we want to have an optimal metabolic balance here. And if we have good vitality, there's a correlation between the metabolism and the vital force. So vital force with longer duration and increased metabolic rate index, which we'll see here. And you can see this going up and down, up and down in this little diagram here. Versus down here, we have low vital force and a decreased metabolic rate index, right? You can see it's starting to decrease here. And then you have over here an extremely low vital force, very low metabolic rate index, and it's stuck probably in VLF here. And this is not much going on here as far as you can see in this diagram between going back and forth between anabolic and catabolic states, and you're going to have a very low uh, MRI, right? Metabolic rate index. So vital force, when you have it, you're going to have a much more improved function through your nervous system and your peripheral nervous system. So we're going to ask Dr. Kermont, how is the vital force derived in the first place. So we are looking at how much input from LF, HF, and VLF, and we want to see the majority of the input from the autonomic nervous system reflected in HF and LF. That's your parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. The HF and LF are much more efficient regulators of the organs and glands, and when functioning correctly, will conserve more of the body's vital energy. By knowing how much LF and HF input, we know how much vital force the patient has. So here's a couple important concepts. We have Dr. Kermoff here with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger over here. And uh, what, we're, what he's saying is, as humans, we need some adrenal input to push energy into our body. And this is sympathetic LF part of the heart quest, right? That's the sympathetic again. Fortunately for us, we have HF or the parasympathetic nervous system to offset the stress response of the parasympathetic nervous system. When we are young, we have spurts of adrenal sympathetic bursts to accomplish tasks and deal with stress. In this state, we have good vital force. But if we have constant stress and we remain in this state, 
the vital force will become depleted and we shift to more HF, low vital, vital force, and an increased stress index, which we'll show you in just a little bit. Or you end up with more very low frequency, low vital force with an increased stress index. And we'll show you what that looks like. So if we have high vital force, it equates with all systems are going to function much better with high vital force. You're going to have an improvement in the gradient voltage ratio between the intracellular and extracellular terrain, creating a healthier cell function. And by the way, if you get on our website and look, we also have a bioimpedance technology that measures phase angle to tell us how healthy your cells are, if you're interested. We're going to have better ATP production, better stress tolerance, which is very, very important, and better detoxification. So having a high vital force is really important. Now, if we have low vital force, it's mostly found in patients that have high VLF, very low frequency. That's the neurohormonal regulation. They're stuck in either anabolic or catabolic state. And all this equates to uh, dysfunction in the body. We can have long-term stress, you know, usually to, to get to that point and, and have decreased energy and lower ATP production. We can have smaller metabolic pyramid and slower BMR, okay, so metabolic rate. So why is the vital force low in the first place? Well, you know, just look at this um, circle here of factors just affecting the adrenal glands. And, and, you know, you're looking at the mental emotional component. You're looking at um, epigenetics. You're looking at, uh, when I say actually, you're looking at um, environmental toxins, you know, as well. So it's the um, psychological stress, lack of relaxation, negative attitudes and beliefs and the fear. On the other side, you know, you were looking at, um, you know, environmental toxins and allergens and, and poor diets and, you know, it's almost everything, right? So I have Clint Eastwood here, the good, the bad, and the ugly of the parasympathetic nervous system. This is really important because everybody who utilizes heart rate variability is always looking for that big parasympathetic portion, like we see here, right? You see all the green here, the high frequency, right? So this is a, it says here, it's about balance, right? It's only high frequency parasympathetic. If, it, if that's all they have, like this one here, it's the big uh, portion of this, this patient will not survive in the, in the, in the emergency room here. This is why we load the IV with powerful catecholamine like epinephrine and dopamine to increase heart rate and blood pressure to stimulate sympathetic function. So it's all about balance. And in you know, general practice, if they have this kind of pattern like uh, mostly parasympathetic and their stress index is high and they have very low vital force, which we're going to talk about, they may feel exhausted, unable to recoup. Even though the patient gets enough rest and sleep, symptoms may include constipation, migraine, asthma, cramps, eczema, low blood pressure. Just Those are just some examples of having that parasympathetic dominance with the uh, low vital force and a high stress index. So we have to have a certain amount of adrenergic input to live, adrenaline. So when we look at these pies here, these are what we're looking at here. We look at the stress index. And even though this person has lots of parasympathetic nervous system function here, good tone there. If the stress index is good, like this one, and their vital force is good, that's great, right? But here's another one. The stress index here at 140, it's over the range here in the parentheses here. And the vital force is supposed to be remember, between 50 to 500. It's only 26. And here's another one. This stress index is super high. It's 760. And their vital force 
is only can. This person is not going to be able to adapt very well to stress. And they have lots of parasympathetic tone. So we have to go beyond that. And uh, that's really uh, very important uh, when we make distinctions about different heart rate variability systems. You want to be able to see uh, the stress index in the vital uh, force. Okay. So we asked a question here. And this again, uh, a lot of the heart rate variability systems are looking at this thing called LF to HF ratio. And it's supposed to be between one and three. And you can see this one is within the range, number one. And this one over here, number two, is way out of the range as far as the LF to HF ratio. So let's just take a guess. Who is going to handle stress better? Well, this one over here has a very high stress index, as we can see here, 1,055, way out of range. And this one has the vital force of 14. So obviously, this one over here with the high vital force is able to handle the stress much better. And their stress index is within range. They could handle being in this range right here. Not forever, because it's you're not they're not going to be able to hold it, but they're at this point they're able to get things done, they need the gas pedal down, they need the energy to function in life, and they can do it. I want to thank you uh today for listening. Um if you want to contact us, this is our number, and we're gonna continue uh with this series and uh we'll keep going. Uh you have a great, great day. And we'll talk to you soon.